really, I found myself yelling at the Pistons. I got angry with the Pistons. Obviously, I'm a Spurs fan, right? Clan the Spurs fan here, but yeah, I like genuinely got upset with the Clippers. I'm mean, not Clippers, I'm sorry, the Pistons. I'm like, oh my God, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Pass the ball. That's cap, bruh. What, what's cap? That I actually got upset that, no, I genuinely did get upset with the Pistons. I was like, what are you, what are you doing? After a while. Now, mind you, we were up by like 20 at this point, okay? So I can kind of let my guard down a little bit. But yeah, no, I, I genuinely did get upset. I was like, what the heck is going on with the Pistons? I felt bad for Pistons fans, to be completely honest with you guys. Um, well, they didn't have K. -Dot. Well, they didn't know, but who cares? All right, so. I mean, they've been bad. They've been bad all season long. But they literally don't have uh, a direction. So first and foremost, okay? Let me go ahead and bring something up before we get into this. If you aren't following me on Twitter or X, people say that I need to say X now. It doesn't matter. If I type in Twitter, it still goes to X. Uh, <laughs> um, if you guys aren't, please, please go follow me on uh, Twitter or X, whatever. Uh, Clan the Spurs fan. And I, I got together a thread here because there's so many crazy narratives out there about how Victor Wambayama and Jeremy Sohan, oh my God, the connection is terrible. Sohan hates Wimby. There's so much jealousy. It, it's, it's, it, it got out of hand at one point. Um, so I got together this thread and I'm going to keep adding to it as the season goes along. Um, and just check it out, man. There's so many different things that I even forgot about. Um, where the, whether it be Sohan, not Sohan, I'm sorry, um, uh, Wimby dyeing his hair, whether it be him congratulating them, whether it be some of the things they have in common as far as book read, like there's so many, uh, different things. And I just added this one to the list. Hold on. We don't, we don't want to get copyrighted. Um, but yeah, it was a really sweet pass, sweet dish from Wimby full court to Sohan. But what I love is this part right here. This is what I love. Hold on, you just mute it. I see you, boy. So yeah, every single one of these moments, we're going to have it documented, okay? Because I'm tired and sick of people just saying things. And I understand, okay? Um, you know, when, when you use your eye test and that's all you go off of, it gets really subjective to the point where you'll think that, oh, I saw him do this one thing in this specific game and that body language made me think this. You know, we're just going to document every single instant, every any small thing, OK, of these two getting along just so we can at least have something to go to. So if you guys want to argue with anybody um, anywhere, you can just tag them in this or you can, you know, send it over to them. All right. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So. San Antonio Spurs versus the Pistons. We'll go through every single player. I'll tell you how I felt about their game and all that uh, good stuff. I, I, spoiler alert, I don't have much negative to say about anybody. Um, but just starting off, uh, Champenny. Actually, funny enough, wait, I do have one negative. Thing. I have one negative thing to say about Pop. One negative thing to say about Pop. Um, but other than that, everyone did great. Uh, Champenny. Uh, he was Champenny. I, I I don't expect much out of. Him. I expect him to come in, play decent defense, maybe get a steal here or there, um, and be a threat. Just it's like teams know he can shoot, so they they stay on him. So he he spaces the floor. He's good with the ball, um, not in his hands as well. So he did fine. Um, uh, Champenny is a G League player, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of. Like, he can play in the NBA, but he's like an end-of-the-bench type player, you know? Like, when it's all said and done, we'll, he'll be on the bench if, if he stays with the Spurs. Are you on Threads, Clan? I gave up on Twitter when Musk bought it. Oh, God, yeah. Musk sucks suck so bad, dude. I, I usually... I, I just use it just so I can connect with people at this point. Um, I am on Threads, but while I don't really use it as much, I'm kind of waiting for it to get a little better. I was using it initially, and then I was just like... Ooh, this is kind of, it's kind of whack. But yeah, I'm on there. You can follow me on there and everything because it's connected to your Instagram. Blah blah blah. Okay, you guys, yeah, yeah, stop. Um, anyways, uh, Sohan uh, had a really good game. I thought uh, he made really good uh, 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 off ball uh, cuts. Um, his shot selection was really good. A, a few of those shots, it's like, ah, dude, I wish you would have attacked the basket there. But it wasn't like they were bad shots that he took. Um, that mid range. Uh, turnaround. He, he's usually pretty decent at it. So, um, but for the most part, he did good. He had a good game. Nothing really there to write home about. Defense was good. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I don't have many adjectives when it comes to his game. It was just good. It wasn't like elite. It wasn't great. It was just a solid game. Just a good game from Jeremy Sohan. 
we'll wait on you. We're gonna we gonna wait on you. Um Trey Jones. Solid game. I, I nothing nothing I can say here. Solid game. Um he once again made a lot of passes, uh, uh cut pass. One thing that I noticed in this game, more so than the other ones, was that Wimby was actually the focal point of the of the offense, which is great. Like it it should have been like this a long time ago. Like we've had it on occasion here or there of certain games, but it seems like they finally just embraced it. And I think that that also comes down to like uh, Wimbanyama getting used to the team, uh, the team actually coming together and saying we're gonna play through him. Uh, it, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think that it has to be kind of a team uh, decision as well. Uh, but it seems like Pop has definitely leaned in that direction. But this was the first game where I felt like every single second was played through Wimby. And I like that. Um, I like that. Durant. Oh, yeah, I did want to talk about that. Um, uh, okay, we'll, we'll get we'll get back to Durant in a minute. I, I do want to talk about Durant. I forgot about that. We'll get to Durant in a minute. Uh, Devin Fassell, solid. I did not care for... Okay, for them playing through Wimby, I'm okay. I'm cool. He was distributing so well. Everybody was getting involved, and we were just kicking their butt. I'm okay for the most part. But Devin Fassell starting off, I felt like he went back to those tendencies of just kind of settling for shots. Uh, and then he started attacking a little bit more, and it, it was a little bit more balanced. And also when uh, Wimby sat down, Devin Fassell, he, he, he took over. He was a little bit more aggressive. But for the most part, I, I don't think that there should be any game. I'll even say with this one, I don't care. Any game which he just takes 12 shots. I, I, want, I want Fassell in that 16, 17 um, shot range regardless but that's just me that's just me as as uh from what i've seen from him i, I want him i would love for facel to just get used to being aggressive every single night right um and not necessarily settling uh, for for certain shots and he settled at the beginning but he got better he got better uh moving on mamu didn't really play didn't really play uh barlow was super solid um but at the same time he can get attacked a lot. Not his fault. It's just the fact that he's a power forward. He's, he's going up against these centers. And I will say this, for what it's worth, he's doing a fine job. I mean, he's doing a very fine job um, of that. I noticed that they usually bring him up to double team because, let's just be honest, a center gets the ball in the paint. It's an automatic point. It's, it's automatic score. Uh, so they're they're bringing him out of the paint at, at times to, to go ahead and double, and then they just rotate over. But for the most part, I thought he did really well, held his own. Um, one thing I don't agree with, though, because someone someone got really angry with me, uh, where I was saying that Barlow isn't as good as Zach Collins, which obviously he shouldn't be at this point in his career. And they were like, no, he's better because he gets blocks. And it's like he averages the same amount of blocks. And then per 36, if you want to go by per 36, Zach Collins still averages way better statistics. I don't know where people were coming or where he was coming from with that. I saw a few other people with that same sentiment. I, I don't I don't know. Look, Don Barlow is holding his own. He's a solid player. And I think when it's all said and done, uh, he will be in this rotation permanently, hopefully permanently. Um, I would like, honestly, I would. It's one or two ways I could, I could see this. Okay, I would either want Don Barlow to come off the bench for Jeremy Sohan, which would be great, or I would like Don Barlow uh, to start and then Sohan be the sixth man for next season. That would be cool too, because you know Sohan is also accustomed to being a sixth man um, in college and, and everything. So he he's he's so versatile; it doesn't really matter. Uh, so either way, uh, but I do want to see Don Barlow in that rotation. I don't want, I know someone mentioned to me, because I, I just want to address it. They were like, well, Clan, what if we did Barlow and Jeremy Sohan uh, uh, starting together and you move Sohan to the small forward position? I don't like that at all. I, I feel like you're you're limiting your options there. You're kind of closing off the court. You're not really opening things up. I don't really like it. I don't like it. That's not cool. I, <laughs> that's a, That seems like a kind of ugly lineup especially coming into this draft where uh, more than likely the spurs are going to get a wing uh starting uh small forward wing hopefully hopefully they'll do that uh, so I, I just don't see that as a possibility uh, but i will say this if they want to go in a smaller lineups at times um barlow and sohan seem to have pretty good chemistry and i was trying to think i well i was trying to think when did sohan when he would have even played with Don Barlow. 
because I know that they came into the league at the same point, but how often did they even play together? I don't know, but I will say that they have chemistry on the court. I don't know. Strange. Anyways, um, Zach Collins is not trash. Calm down. He's not trash. He's, he's actually playing well. Um, if you think, if you think Don Barlow's playing well, Zach Collins is playing well. All right. Um, I mean, it's in the statistics. Anyways, uh, McDermott did his thing. I mean, he did his thing. I mean, his his backdoor cuts, uh, constantly moving without the ball in his hands. Defense is still like dreadful, but it's okay. You know, he's McDermott. Uh, so yeah, he he's uh, he did what what we need him to do. He went four for five from three. You can't ask for more. Uh, Osman, same thing. Really great backdoor cuts. Uh, got three uh, assists in there. Two steals. I mean, he was very active. Uh, I, I I liked every second of that. He did he did very well uh, too. Uh, Keldon Johnson, same thing. Um, he, I mean, he did what they asked him to. I, I really look. I, I have no analysis for this. Everyone just plays so solid. There's nothing I can really say that's negative. But yeah, Keldon Johnson just did his thing. Uh, they asked they asked him to come in, take over the second unit. That's exactly what he did. Um, I but oh okay. So, all right, all right, hold on, hold on. Before we get into Duran, you, you just finish off. Uh, Malachi Branham did okay. Um, once again, defense isn't the best, but, you know, for what you need him to do, uh, he did it. Now, one thing that upset me is I don't think they gave him an assist. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think they gave him an assist for that pass to Wimby where he shot it, missed it. I guess he didn't really get the rebound, but he tipped it over to Wimby. I'm pretty sure he tipped it. That wasn't just like a loose ball there. I don't know. They didn't give him the assist for that, and I, I didn't like that. I don't think they did, but he got three assists on the on the books. And I don't think one of those is to Wimby, so that's unfortunate. Anyways, uh, and Wesley, even though he played six minutes, very effective. It felt like longer um, in a good way. And, yeah, he showed his athleticism. He showed his tenacity defensively did his thing uh so everybody just had a very solid game they started off a little sluggish uh but when it was all said and done Wimby got him involved and the 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 momentum just shifted and everybody just played really really well I thought now I will say this okay so <laughs> Jalen Duran. so a couple of you in the comments I just saw it said Jalen Duran is better than uh Sohan or, or something in the lines of that I think you're crazy I, I will I will stick by this since draft day. Jalen Duran is a solid center, but as far as what what Sohan can do on the court for his size, no, he's way more valuable than a Jalen Duran. If Spurs had Jalen Duran, yeah, you could use a player like that. But for what Sohan brings, he's much more valuable. And I I don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even know where people are coming from with that in this game very similar to the jared allen game it was just dump off dunk dump off dunk dump off dunk that was it that was it that's that's that was his game when he tried to do anything outside of that three-point shooting or when he tried to shoot or not shoot a three he, he shot a um uh the out, outside shot every time he attempted to shoot an out outside shot it, it was ugly it was it was really bad uh but yeah it was that's all it was it was just Dump off dunk. And if Wimby was in the game for the big chunk of the, those points that he was getting, uh, yeah, he, he would have had a pretty poor game. But, yeah, it was the same thing. I, I don't know. I feel like Spurs fans often have this uh, infatuation with uh, big men that can dunk. I don't know where this is coming from. Uh, who's that player that we had? Crap, who's that player that we had, man? What's his name? He's like a cancer in the locker room. Or he ended up being known as a cancer in the locker room. Spurs got rid of him. Ah, what's his name? That center. Everyone loved him. You guys remember? DJ? <laughs> no, not DJ. Uh, do you guys know what I'm talking about? He had like an older face. Deadman. Yes, yes. Thank you, Riru. Yeah, Deadman. Deadman. People love Deadman. And for years, everybody was just saying, get a center in the draft that can dunk. Get a center. Everyone wanted Kai Jones. There were so many Spurs fans that wanted Kai Jones. And I'm like, no, these, these types of players are pretty limited. You can get those in free agency. You can get those through really small trades. You don't have to go all out. 
and use up a really good draft pick for a center that can dunk rebound you, you don't have to do that um i mean shoot we tanked and now we got a player that can do all of that uh so yeah i i don't know so as far as Duran versus sohan that's so silly to me like sohan is obviously blatantly the better uh, uh player than than Duran. even though Duran's a good player uh you get more utility out of having a jeremy sohan on your roster now with that being said with that being said wimby my god this dude was absolutely insane they finally played through him for the entire game um i loved how uh, how much he communicated with his teammates um i loved i loved the body language i loved everything about it his iq is just beyond everyone else's and now he's to the point where he's directing traffic he's telling people where he wants them to be where they need to be it is beautiful and if you guys remember or you recall we talked about this a, a long time ago um but when he was in france and he got and zero turnovers i didn't even notice that i just looked at the the chat yeah zero turnovers i didn't even realize the zero turnovers yeah because usually he gets you a good like five turnovers <laughs> He usually give you a good five of them. Um, yeah, zero turnovers. That's really good. Really impressive. Um, getting a triple double within 21 minutes is is really impressive. I looked up where is the who, like who has the fastest, and I think it's Jokic with 14 minutes, the fastest triple double. Um, but yeah. Anyways, what I was saying was when he was over in France and he went to that awful team, all right, Metropolitan, awful team. Uh, he actually was in charge of a lot of different things. Uh, he said that he was in charge of making sure that they were eating correctly, making sure that they were working out and their workout schedule was good. He just, he took over everything as like an 18 year old, absolutely insane. What he said he had to do and what he was responsible over. So I am not shocked by any means that in the NBA level, since he doesn't have to do as much as he did there, it's, it's going to be, it's going to really shine. Sorry, I'm late. It's okay. But yeah, he's um he's really good. I I I hate this game. I love this game, but I hate this game because I literally have nothing to say. I I don't I don't have any I have nothing. Oh, oh. I remember what I was going to say. This is the last thing, okay? This is the only thing we'll say. Um Popovich upset me. Uh <laughs> He upset me. I think it was at the end of the third. Let me make sure. I think it was the end of the third quarter. Oh, wait. I'm going the wrong... No, I'm going the right way. Was it the end? It ended with Keldon missing a shot. Okay, yeah. It was the end of the third quarter. Okay, so... If you guys recall... So, Killian Hayes, yeah, he made that step back uh, jump shot. And then Blake Wesley got the ball and he zipped down the court which I don't know if he was trying to see if he had an opening, if he was going to get something easy, but he definitely slowed down after Pop like yelled at him. And then he passed the ball out to Keldon. He got in the corner, and he was wide open when Keldon made his drive. He didn't get the ball, um, but I don't know. That just kind of bothered me because I would have rather saw uh, Blake Wesley at the end of the third just, you know, just a learning experience, you know? I mean, you're up by 20. Let's see what we can do. You know, with, with the ball in his hands, him being a point guard and all. But uh, they went to their trusted hand, Keldon, and that's fine. But I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And I already, and we all know, Keldon get the ball. That's a wrap, right? Like, <laughs> that's a wrap. Keldon isn't, like, his assist numbers are pretty decent. But that tunnel vision is something real. We, we knew. We knew. And he tried to score on, like, three people. And I'm like, oh, dang it. But... Not a big deal. It's only one play, but that is something that bothered me when Pop got on to to Blake there. I'm like, dude, that let Blake let Blake do his thing. Like, I don't know. That bothered me. Did you hear the commentator say they were surprised when we could pass again? I heard that, and I'll be honest with you guys, I get kind of tired of listening to the commentators. Sometimes I just mute it or I just turn it down and I'm just having something else play like a podcast or something off of YouTube. I, I, I literally do. I don't not listen to them. I don't like listening to them, dude. I truly don't like listening to them. Like, how do you not know? How do you not know Wimby can pass the ball? You know, like you're covering the Spurs. How do you not know that Wimby's Wimby passed the ball? 
we were talking about that far before far before um this game uh angie says can we say that wimby is far better than lebron at 20 years of age and maybe even now no we can't say that no no actually actually we're not going to say that <laughs> no wimby is a better rookie than lebron He's a different rookie than LeBron. I'll, I'll say this. With LeBron uh, as a rookie, I think he had more defined traits than Wimby, in, um, which which made it where his game was more solid than Wimby's. While Wimby, he has the physical gifts. Well, LeBron did too and, and does too. But uh, I me, mean, obviously, it's like blatantly obvious. Like this is something we've never seen before. Um he, he can affect the game defensively maybe a little bit better than LeBron could. LeBron didn't play defense. That's a good point. It's not like LeBron never played defense. I, I, I just feel like that's a little disrespectful. I, I won't go as far as to say he's better than LeBron now and he's better than LeBron when he was... I won't go that far. LeBron was an absolute monster. Um, and because of his defined traits, they did win more games. Like it's very, it's very obvious. Like with LeBron is very obvious, the blueprint to win with LeBron, right? You surround around shooters. Like it, it's very obvious with Wimby. It's a little tougher. You're still trying to figure things out. You know, I just won't go that far. If you want to say there, he's just as good. Maybe you can say that, but even right, right now to this day, I cannot say Wimby is a better player than LeBron James in the current NBA. I, I will not say that. I will not say that. Like LeBron is so freaking good. Like his his IQ alone is is ridiculous. Um, but when it's all said and done, I I believe me personally, I believe Wimby could end up being the greatest player of all time. You know, so that'll tell you how much or how much faith I have in him. Wimby is not better than LeBron right now. I agree. We can confirm LeBron's teammates definitely hated him when he first joined the Cavs. They hated him before he even got to the Cavs because of all the hype he was getting. I don't think that was any fault to LeBron. Like before he even got there, they were they hated him, right? I thought we were talking rookies. Suppose. I mean no, well well, the, the reaction was to Angie saying that he's better than LeBron right now and he was better than him as a rookie. I just won't go that far. Pull the numbers since y'all use analytics for everything. What, you want to look at numbers? between? I mean, if you want to, that's fine. That might be fun to look at. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, hold on. I think you just go to NBA comparisons. Uh, no, this ain't it. Uh, stat hit, that's it. All right, let's see. Let's see. Compare players. We'll do. Oh, let's choose a specific season. We'll do Wimbanyama. He only played this year, so. And then we'll do LeBron James. Uh, LeBron was 19. Yeah, that's fine. And then. Huh? Get results can we do it can we get some results all right here we go so lebron averaged slightly more points wimby more uh rebounds which makes sense way more assists from lebron which makes sense slightly more steals from lebron way more blocks from wimby which makes sense field goal percentage better from wimby i mean i, I won't even pretend better better from wimby uh, three point percentage nearly the same free throw percentage nearly the same um, estimated uh, field goal percentage uh, okay yeah I don't know see it's like even if you bring up the numbers like as far as the stats are concerned it's still debatable like I, I, I don't know I don't know Oh, thanks, Steven Scott. I just noticed that. Thank you for the super chat. Blair? What do you mean? You bring up DeWan Blair? What, what, 
Rookie LeBron played in a way different league, more de- defensive minded, different rules. I don't like to compare, especially when it's huge of a gap. Yeah, like we're talking 20 years ago, right? I mean, yeah, I just feel like, like you, like you said, July. I think it's just, I think it's just more nuanced than that. Yeah, I, I think it's just a little bit more nuanced. But I, I won't go that far. I won't, I won't say Vic is better, was a better rookie than LeBron, and I certainly won't say he's a better player today than LeBron is today. Like, I won't go that far. I mean, we wouldn't like that, right? Like, we wouldn't like that. When when Duncan was a little bit older, I mean, we wouldn't like people saying, well, DeMarcus Cousins is better than what Duncan is today. And it's like, well, on paper, statistically, possibly, yeah. But, like, when they go head-to-head, I mean, you know, I just won't go that far. Anyways, uh, good stuff. That's all I had to say about this game. It was, it was, pretty, it was pretty nice. But... I'm going to let our sponsor take it away, and we're going to discuss a little bit about BetUS. BetUS, America's favorite sports book, where you can bet on everything, anytime. Sportsbook, casino, horse racing, live betting, and more. We have the best bonuses in the industry. That's right, get a 125% sign-up bonus. And to celebrate our 30-year anniversary, we are giving up to 30 risk-free bets, a truck, Super Bowl tickets, and more. Don't miss out. Play smart. Join now. BetUS, where the game begins. All right, guys. So please, please, please head on over to BetUS. You'll receive a 125% bonus. Link in the description. As I always say, if you guys support the sponsors, you're supporting me. Um, There's so many different things that you can bet on, whether it be player props, whether it be specific games, whether it be who's going to win the NBA championship could be us. It won't be us, but yeah, there's just so many different things. Just check it out at the very least. Like I said, link in the description, it would mean the world to me. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, some really great stuff over there. Um, but thank you guys so much for, uh, supporting the channel the way that you do. It it really does mean uh, a lot to me.